to convince your mind, you know, of a rational assessment of risk and irrational fear and weigh that up. Um, but you also have to, when you're on a route, particularly one that is 50 metres long, there's strategy involved. You've always got to be tossing up between how long do I stay, should I climb fast, should I climb slow, how long have I got on this route. So it's, it's a constant um, assessment along the way of where you are on the route and how your physical, how your body's holding up as well. Is one of the things you have to overcome is your fear in rock climbing. If you want to climb, well particularly to your limit, then you have to be able to shut that aspect out because otherwise your mind is occupied, it's elsewhere. It's, so in order to climb well, then um, you do have to assess and be able to package fear to the back of the brain. We've just climbed a 34 grade climb in Spain called Mind Control, which I think is the highest grade climb for any Australian woman. So it's like the, the pinnacle, as it were. It's a 50 metre route, so it's a very long, sustained climb. So you have to be concentrating for a very long period of time. In your husband Simon's blog, he talked about it and he talked about um, power screams. Mm, you were yes. screaming as you, uh, as you did it. It's kind of screaming with enthusiasm. My husband re referred to me power screaming just in order for me to take the hand off a hold in order to shake my hand. So it's like, <gasps> because in order to continue up the climb, I have to reduce the lactic acid in my forearms. And so for, to do that, if the handhold is only big enough for one hand then I have to remove one and then match hands to swap and shake. And the shaking action is what reduces the lactic acid levels. At one point on the climb, I think it requires a cartwheel of it's, some sort. Yeah, so the move, um, it's an undercling like this, and I have a handhold over here and I, I get two high feet, and a cartwheel move goes across the body. And then what I'd have to do next is release this hand. And by doing such, I create a barn door. So the trick is to, um, stop the momentum from pulling me off the climb. Why is it called mind control? I think it's called mind control because you need to be in control of your mind to the very end. It's not one of the most physical, um, technical routes that I've done, but in terms of a mental capacity, you have to remain focused to the very last move. And 50 metres of climbing is a lot of climbing. Tell, tell, let's talk about how you got into it because mm -hmm. you began as a uh, as a gymnast. That's right. I think and and uh, became went into performance acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Tell us about wh wh how the transition occurred from that into into rock climbing. Okay. Well, as you mentioned, I was an elite gymnast till I was 14 years old, and I absolutely loved gymnastics and I couldn't get enough of the training aspect. I was training probably 25 hours per week, but. I actually started to get scared because I was throwing some very hard skills and when you start missing them time and time again, you become fearful of them. And I just, I, I think I just came to a point in my life where I thought that's enough. Enough is enough, I have to stop. Um, because so you thought you'd do something safe like climbing cliffs? Yeah, well it's interesting that you say that because unlike gymnastics, um, I actually have a safety backup. I have a rope when I climb a cliff. So. Although I don't use it all the time, it's still there. And if you trust the system, then... It is you, actually safer. It, well, you, do, you don't have to land on your head each time you try to perfect a movement. Uh, have you fallen? And, and do you get scared as a result? I fall all the time. It's part of the process of solving the climb itself. Do I get scared? Sometimes, but I have a really good understanding and trust in the system and usually my husband's blank so I completely trust him um, but yeah overcoming fear and fear of falling is something that every climber has to deal with. How does parking that fear in the as you put it mm -hmm. help you in your daily life? Well perhaps not so much my daily life but overcoming things that I am confronted by for example public speaking or doing interviews they're very um, 
nerve wracking for me. So I guess assessing a situation and just putting it in a manageable bundle and parking it somewhere is the way that I can do that because otherwise I'm just too, I'd be too petrified to front up for this interview, for example. <laughs> Great to talk to you, Monique. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I did it!